find out what's going on, get involved, change things from the inside, make a difference, take pride. Multicultural at its best, The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. Today, all you simply the best. Let's stop bullying. It's a serious act that has long-term mental and emotional consequences. I was born in Capiz. My Raquel family was, was bullied in school because she siblings. was skinny and small. On the show today is a victim of bullying almost all of her school life in the Philippines. I have been bullied in my childhood day in high school, growing up in the Philippines. Did you ever feel depressed, sad, and sometimes, you know, embarrassed to go to school? This young man wrote his first book of his very personal experience as a victim of severe bullying and harassment that drove him to the It's worse than ever. It is worse than ever. It, it's Jordan was bullied by his classmates because of his being overweight. But it is a little out of control and it's scary. It's at a point now where it's, it's scary. And it got to a point uh, where I was beyond rock bottom. Two victims of severe bullying okay. turned their lives around, making a difference and inspiring others. Overseas Filipino workers all over the world. All these coming up. Bullying is an everyday occurrence for many children. It is a serious act that has long-term mental and emotional consequences and sometimes ending in tragic suicide for the child being abused. It happens in schools, playgrounds, and social media like Facebook, texting, and Twittering. Often, these children are powerless to stop the bullies. They're afraid to speak out, even to their own parents and, and their teachers. On the show today is a victim of bullying almost all of her school life in the Philippines. She had no friends. I was born in Capiz. My family was poor and I have five siblings. My father died when I was 13. We moved to Bilacan and I studied secondary high school there. I studied college at Philippine Normal University in Manila and finished Bachelor of Science in Mathematics for teachers. I became a math teacher in Valenzuela before going to Morocco at the age of 22. I worked as a tutor in Morocco from 2006 to 2010 before coming here in Canada as a live-in caregiver. I am, I am with a family who employed me for two years and six months already. I have been bullied in my childhood day, days in high school, growing up in the Philippines, and I am here to empower others to stand up and stop bullies. On April 2012, she published her book, that won an award. She became a leader and an advocate to the overseas Filipino workers by blogging and has a fan base of thousands all over the world. Let's welcome on the show, Raquel Delfin Fadilia. Take a look. How are you, Raquel? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Short notice, but you're here. Thank you yes. so much. Yes, my employers are so nice. <laughs> Hi. You have been working as a live-in caregiver yes. for almost two years now here. Yes, two years and six months to be exact. Is that the first time you work as a live-in yes. caregiver? Yes. Hmm. Uh, no, when I was in Morocco, I also I already worked as you know a tutor and a little bit of household chores, but yeah. not you know, but not like what I am doing here right now. What's your experience like compared to your life in the Philippines? Well, like your experience here. Yeah, well, in the Philippines, well, I was kind of, you know, um, I was a teacher there. I'm not doing household work. So I, my employers here are, take, uh, are treating me like a family. So it's a good thing because I don't have friends here. I don't have family. They have been good with me for all these years. It's nice to hear that. So you work in Morocco, too, as yes. a tutor, right? Yes. So how was that experience to you? My employers there in Morocco... Um, are Filipinos, Filipino Canadians mm -hmm. who are working uh, at the palace. I mean, I enjoyed the experience. You enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morocco is beautiful, isn't it? Yes, yes. There's Raquel in Morocco. I understand you have been bullied? Yes. In yes. the Philippines? Yes, all, my, all my, high sc my, my school life. All your school life? Yes. Since kindergarten? Um, well, 
since first grade and then high school and then college until I was what? teaching. Yes. Until you're teaching? <laughs> yes. Until I was teaching. Until here. Uh, uh, here? Yes. Well, here it's not it's not that much, but I I think I've been used to it. That's why I'm You've not. You've been really, used to it. I've been used to being bullied. So no I, way. It, it it didn't affect me that much. No, <laughs> nobody should be used to be being bullied. Well, nobody. Um, yeah. It has become a worldwide problem, you know that. Yes. And and do you honestly think that bullying right now is worse than ever? Of course. If before bullying is only, you know, face to face right now, cyberbullying is really really rampant. And as what I've read, um, people are bullying in the internet because they're like, you know, they can make dummy accounts, not their names, something like that. So yeah, I've read somebody who, who uh, committed suicide because of that. Looking back during those years of abuse in the Philippines, did you ever feel depressed, sad, and sometimes, you know, embarrassed to go to school? Yes, um, I remember when I was in first grade. Um, it, was a, it was the first ever um, bullying that I, I experienced. This is what happened. When I, was, when I was going home, I had this bag with you know, torn um, zippers, something like that, and I can't close it. And then my 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 classmates, they put uh, leaves in there, rock. They're like, um, they put uh, leaves, they put rocks, and then they hide or they they run. And you, I don't know who who did it. And then one time I was so annoyed, and um, and when one of my classmates put the le uh, the the leaf on my on my in my bag. I got, you know, I, I pick up the rock and throw at him, and then he he had a big cut in his in his in his uh, eyebrows. How old were you then? I was seven. You were seven years old. Yes, I was seven, and then and then um, when I went home, I was so scared because my mother always uh, reminded us not to fight back. She always reminded us to just ignore those people. The next day. The, the brother, the older brother of that classmate, classmate of mine who had a cut in here, mm -hmm. he came to me and said, oh no, my mother was really, really angry. And then he said, uh, you have to give me your, your money right now, your food. And he, he did that for months. For months, he did that. And I was like, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell anybody? I didn't tell anybody. Why? Because I was scared. Because of my mo my mother always my mother always uh, told us not to fight people. And then since we were poor, we didn't have money. I went to the forest to get some some trees to, <laughs> and then I, I I sold them to the to the store so I could have money to give it to him. Because if I don't have money, he'll gonna get mad at me. And he said we're gonna uh, tell the police that you did this. And until one day, my mother was like. What happened? You've been not eating, and before you were not you were not asking for money. How come now? Every day you ask for money, and then I was crying. I told her what happened, and then we came to my friend's house, and then and then the rea the reality stuck in me that he actually didn't tell their mom that they bullied me, mm -hmm. and then um, and then started that day the bullying their bullying to me stopped aha uh -huh. yeah yeah but she so finally spoke yes you told your mother about it yeah okay during high school i had the same experience because we moved from capis to bulacan and uh, well my friends were like scared of me because of the folklore <laughs> that we had there the folklore is uh, if you if you came from that town you are actually uh, Flying. A flying, uh, what do you call those things? <laughs> aswang. In, in Tagalog, it's called aswang, right? Yes. So it's like manananggal or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, the half body. Half body. Like ha a vampire kind of, you know, yeah. creatures. Yeah. And, and they were scared of you. Well, I had no friends. They friend. called you aswang. Yeah. yeah. You had no friends because no you were aswang. <laughs> Until I was, I was, I, I was, I was uh, fourth. <laughs> I was uh, fourth year high school, like um, oh. senior. So, what did you learn from this experience of yours? Well, um, well, if I it's a life lesson, huh? Yes, yes. If I just listen to what they say, I would be a negative person right now. Mm -hmm. But instead of that, I told myself one day, 
you're gonna see me. I'm not the same person anymore. I'm gonna prove to you that you know I can do something. So I think I, I have done that. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you've done that because you published a book that garnered an award in the Philippines. This book is a compilation of different life stories of the biggest contributors to the Philippines, the overseas Filipino workers. And you have become an inspiration and an advocate to all the hardworking Filipinos worldwide. Well, what I've experienced is not very, very, you know, it's not very sad. And when I, when I read about the experiences, I've learned that there are so many things in this world that can be thankful for. In October 2011, I lost my status here in Canada. Yes, I lost my status as, um, as a um, temporary resident visa, so I wasn't allowed to work. So I, I went into Facebook and I was like going to share my my sad moments here and I was like oh what if I'm gonna go home something like that and then one story made me realize that I, I, I'm, I, I'm lucky because I'm here in Canada I have three months to prove to the immigration that I can stay here and then instead of you know instead of sharing what my life was here I just I just shared to them the you know the positive things and then from becoming uh, you know when I was poor and then and then um, finishing the college and going to Morocco and coming here in Canada so I didn't realize that after sharing that a lot of people messaged me and then you inspired us and then starting that day I was like writing you know stories of, of Filipino workers and until now finally I can stand for myself and I can um, stand up for other people as well and uh, I'm here um, to stop bullying we're gonna be back with Raquel later on. Thank you. This young man wrote his first book of his very personal experience as a victim of severe bullying and harassment that drove him to depression and contemplated suicide, but eventually fought back by overcoming his obesity. He's here with us to talk about his ongoing mission to rid obesity, harassment, bullying, and negativity from the lives of young people. Hi, Jordan. Hi, how are you? I'm good. good thank good. you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming. All right, anti-bullying. Yes, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big campaign. You said it all in your book. It's an epidemic. It is. It is. It is an it's, epidemic. We haven't found a cure yet. We haven't, we're, we're moving along, we're taking steps, the necessary steps, but uh, it's still a long journey, unfortunately. And we, it's worse than ever. It is worse than ever, it's funny. Um, it, it's almost 20 times worse than when I got bullied. The world's doing great work on anti-bullying campaigns and even us here uh, today, uh, spreading the awareness and trying to help, but it is a little out of control and it's scary. It's at a point now where it's, it's scary. Social media, is, it's huge now, it's everywhere, and, um, and it's attracting our youth um, younger and younger, and, and to cyberbullying even at a younger age, which is now turning into even a more epidemic. Uh, cyberbullying is, is, is worse than one-on-one uh, -on -one bullying, or bullying in the playground, or bullying in the workplace, or bullying at school. Cyberbullying is, is a out big of control. Because it can spread fast, yeah. like a wildfire. You know, I hope it doesn't get to a point where there's already been so many uh, tragic situations yeah which, you know, things should have already been put in place, you know, with all our awareness and everything that we're doing. It has doing, to stop. It has to stop. It just has to stop. Yeah. So do you think that bullies are actually the bad results or outcomes of children who have been bullied themselves? Through my tour and everything I've done through anti-bullying, um, that was the number one question I kept asking myself. Well, where, yeah. Where, they, they, you were bullied. I was bullied. <laughs> yeah. I was bullied, yeah. yeah. Did got, you yeah. turn into a bully? I didn't you turn into a bully. No, I felt sorry for them. You and felt sorry um, for you know, the way about it, the way I went about it, and I, I try to teach everybody and try to you know give a positive mindset. Like you know, it's it's a blessing to a degree, you mm -hmm. know, but all depends on how you take it, right? Because it, it ultimately can make you into a phenomenal person, or it can destroy you. It's whatever path you allow it to do, 
right? And for me, obviously, I'm here right now, so it didn't destroy me. But I teach everybody to, to, to look at it from a positive perspective. So it, it, it builds that confidence in you, uh, it, that, you know, self-motivation, control, all that sort of stuff. And feel sorry for those people that are doing that. Because there is an underlying truth to why they are being bullies, right? Like, why is it? Is it, is it their life at home? Did they get bullied so now they're being bullies? Is it, is it something that they're not happy about themselves, a flaw or whatever, because we're so tied up with you know, today's society about look good and feel good and be like this and be like that. What I found a lot, uh, especially when I was on tour, was their life at home. Their life at home was a little unstable. You know, there, there was something going on there which was causing a um, young boy, young girl, or adult at this case, uh, being a oh, bully, yeah. right? Well, let, talking about adult bullying. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A lot of it is going on too. There is a lot of it going on. That is my next book that's coming out. Is in about the workplace. In the workplace, yeah, bullying workplace, in the workplace, yeah. uh, which is out of control. I've done something unique, and actually, your show is going to be the first time I'm actually going to be mentioning it. Uh, awesome. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm so lucky today. <laughs> I. Uh, emerged myself into the working environment on multiple different levels, different employers, different parts of the city, uh, different provinces, different everything, to experience um, this workplace bullying. And I guess you can kind of say I was undercover. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was almost like a case study. I wanted yeah. to embrace myself and any, any you know, I didn't change who I was. I wanted to see, okay, this is who I am. And you're going into that yeah, situation. Yeah, again? I, I wanted to see. Yeah, I want. Oh, I put myself geez. in a situation to to be bullied. Oh. And, and but more importantly, I also observed. I wanted to see who was being bullied, what was going on if I wasn't, and yeah. why. And, and you know these these power authorities that uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of hierarchy. You know, like uh, military policing, all that sort yeah. of stuff. There has to be order. But for those yeah. that that take a Get to the next level and use it as abuse, that's what we need to stop, right? And it's usually the bullies that progress through childhood that are in those power positions, I wouldn't say power position, but in those positions to um, continue on being bullies. Why do you think they continue to be bullies? Because no one helped them. Does it mean that nobody stepped in? Like nobody really told them that, hey, you're a bully, stop it. I think you're right. I don't think it was, um, I don't think it was addressed. Yeah. Um, we focus so much, which we need to, on the victims. Yeah. Because they are hurt or fragile. We reprimand the, the bully, but the bully needs help too. Exactly. The bullies need as much help as the victims. And if we can slow down on the bullies, we'll have less victims. Exactly. And we'll have less bullies <laughs> in the workplace, right? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, right? Obesity is one of the biggest bullying triggering factors among young people. You turn your life around instead. I did. Uh, for me, uh, you know, I was always a, a big kid. I tall in stature. I carried myself. And at a young age, I was really overweight for my age. <laughs> Grade four or five, uh, weight piled on. And I didn't think anything of it until uh, okay. the bullies kind of informed me of what I was. I was the fat kid. I was this kid. I was that kid. They kind of showed me what I was. And I was out of place. Yeah. All right. And that's, what the, that's the way they made me feel. And when you're young and you're, you know, you, you, friends are no friends, uh, you know, they're either there or they're not there for you. But, you know, what, one thing that, that's a common occurrence is the victims. We don't go home and tell our folks about it. We don't tell anybody about it. We, it's funny and it takes so much out of people to finally uh, admit it. And it's an embarrassing thing. And so for, for anyways, for me, it was the over, being overweight. And it got to a point uh, where I was beyond rock bottom through um, faith and just the fact that I wanted to have a second chance at life. Uh, I transformed myself. And, you uh, lost all that weight. Lost all that weight. And, and I came back and I shook their hand and <laughs> yeah. said, did you have a good summer? And I'll never forget, I walked into to school the very first day of grade 11, none of my clothes fit, it was all like drapes. And um, one of my counselors came up to me and says, he was just in tears, he couldn't believe it. And he said, one day you gotta write a book. And I said, well first, I, I gotta pass English first before I write a book, I'm like, I can barely do that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'll think about it. Yeah, exactly, so I laughed about it. But then after, I was like, you know what? I gotta share the story, right? Uh, and then since then, you know, the tools in my book uh, help develop um, motivational thinking, uh, 
affirmations, uh, goal setting, all that sort of stuff that's, it's about, a, you know, life development. How do you get the message out there? I think by this lovely Very show fun. here, yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, cyberbullying and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think we need yeah. to start having campaigns to embrace the bullies. Exactly. Come here, right here. Tiny little you. <laughs> all right, we're back now with uh, Raquel and Jordan. Raquel's been bullied because she's so tiny. She, yeah, well, she, you are so tiny after now. <laughs> And Jordan was bullied during your school days because you were oh, big. You're there big. You're huge. Oh my goodness! Bullying in schools. We can still do something about this. And and thank you so much for sharing with us your experience. But then you know, I still want one last word from you guys. We talk so much about the bullies. Okay, what about the bystanders? They should put themselves in a person being bullied. The, uh, in my Facebook account, I was like uh, seeing a lot of people who are being bullied and I, to the bullies, I tell them that um, what if this happens to you? And to the person who is being bullied, I'm gonna tell them, you know what guys, you have to uh, just ignore them or you have to be positive. Instead of taking it personally, just, you know, just go on with your life. If you receive a garbage, are you gonna take them? Or are you gonna throw it? Ignore. Yeah, ignore. If I see someone being bullied, it, it, it enrages me. I, I want to step right in, uh, stop it, uh, you know, confront the, the bully and confront the victim. In short, you're gonna be like anti-bullying hero. Don't wait that it happens to you, to your family, to your loved ones. If you are experiencing any sort of bullying, uh, don't be shy about it. Uh, you're not alone. There, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, there's two great examples sitting here on the couch. Right? Yes. Uh, there is hope. Are you writing another book, Jordan? I am. I'm doing the uh, the workplace bullying. And you're on your second book too. Yes. This March, um, in the Philippines, it's gonna be nationwide, and then um, we're going to ship around the world as well. And to all the kids out there, to all the adults out there, you have to think twice before you click. Think twice before you like a post. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Don't go away. We'll be back. Women in Film and TV Vancouver invites you to the 8th Annual Vancouver International Women in Film Festival with a selection of international, Canadian, and local films. Coinciding with International Women's Day on March 8th, the festival celebrates the best of women in cinema and offers a wide variety of dramas, documentaries, and animation. Highlights include three world premieres, Little Black Spiders, A Broken Tear, The Stolen. Tickets on sale now. For more information, go to womeninfilm.ca or on facebook.com women in film. Right here, right now, a musical. Sunday, March 10th, 2 p.m. at the River Rock Casino Theater. Tickets at Ticketmaster. Close to you, a spring dinner and dancer with the Rosario Strings and Friends. March 15th, 7 p.m. at South Hall, Vancouver. Tickets at 604-773-6441. Don't miss the Louisa Marshall Band at the Lion's Den Boulevard Casino, March 16th, Saturday at 9 p.m. At the Lulu's Lounge River Rock Casino, March 29th, Friday and March 30th, Saturday. Showtime, 9 p.m. Nanay Kupo, a Kantawanan special concert featuring Fedulus Reyes with Pork and Beef. Saturday, May 11th at 7 p.m. at the Broadway Church, Vancouver. Tickets at 604-773-6441. Congratulations to B. Benson, a grade 12 student from Guilford Park Secondary School, for her winning artwork that was chosen from more than 400 entries to be on the front of this year's Anti-Bullying Day t-shirts. Her meaningful design of two hands clasped together into the shape of a heart over the slogan, See Something, Say Something, will be worn by 10,000 students and others to mark Anti-Bullying Day on February 27th. Hope everybody's wearing pink today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let's stop bullies, cyberbullying, and other forms of harassment. Think before you click. Think before you like. Let's be kind. Hi, everybody. Um, see you on Monday. Okay, this is a, a message to all the overseas Filipino workers all over the world. 
Kumusta po kayo? We hope that all of you are safe and healthy and happy. And uh, wow, keeping yourselves busy, working, working, working. And of course, I know that you love this girl right beside me. Hi guys! Kamusta kayo lahat? And, oh, ayan, binabati ko na kayo. Hindi ko na kayo isa-isahin. So, yeah, um, and to my family, to all my friends, uh, yeah, everyone, everybody, my book uh, buyers, my uh, my likers, everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you for being always there for me. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Salamat po. Take care. Take care everyone.